careful. How can I have forward? to be revealed to those who have eyes to see. Far to the north, beyond the windswept peaks of the spine of the world, beyond the realms of men who call themselves civilized, dwell a people whose way of life is built upon the gift of sight. Among the tribes of the Uthgard, the visions of a shaman serve to guide his people through the fog of an uncertain future. So it was with Yoldair, elder and shaman to the tribe of the bear. For it was his visions that foretold the return of a slain king awakened from the halls of death by a spirit consumed by vengeance. His vision carried him across the tundra to a place where men built their homes beneath an ancient oak with branches that stretched skywards to embrace the clouds. It is here that his vision showed him the faces of the strangers that would journey far across a sea of ice and snow. To the frozen north, these heroes would come, drawn into a twisted maze of shared destinies that would lead us all into the cold and terrible heart of winter. Outside the settlement your people call Lonely Wood. Of the ten towns, it is the nearest to my people's homeland, and will no doubt fall first if my people heed Wolfdane's call to war. Now I must leave you, for I am not welcome among the homes of these southerners. Though we journey towards the same destination, our paths are not one. people of this town will know the way to the camp of my people. Travel swiftly and safely. We shall meet again when you stand before the council in the great mead hall.
careful and quiet. Careful and quiet. It shall be done. Careful and quiet. Yes. And quiet. It shall be done. It shall be done. Careful and quiet. Forward. and quiet. Speak your mind at once. Your command agreed. Careful and quiet. Agreed. It shall be done. Careful and quiet. At once.
Yeah, fine, fine. Yes. Careful and quiet. Speak your of course. Agreed. Careful and quiet. It shall be done. Huh? Okay. How can I help? At once. It shall be done. Yes? Speak your mind. Forward. Agreed. Onward. Careful and quiet. Yes, onward. shall be done.
Speaking Careful. mind, of Good course. Fun. Yes? Forward. Speak your mind. Agreed. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. How can I help? It shall be done. Your command? Agreed.
Yes? Agreed. 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 Speak your mind. Agreed. Wolfgang, blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared, once king of the tribe of the bear, now king of the tribe of the great worm, son of Feingar the fearless, slayer of the dwarven spy in single combat with a single stroke of his blade, slayer of the great bear. Enough. Your words honor me, but they are wasted on these outlanders. They know nothing of our ways, and will surely find such things tedious. Then perhaps at another time you shall. For now, however, 
I would know why you have come before me. The one known as Wolfdane died and was laid to rest. As his spirit prepared to leave the shell of his body, he had a vision. Jared, the savior of old, appeared before him. He asked that Wolfdane join with him. He said that together they could return the tribes to their former glory. It was an honor that Wolfdane could not refuse. I awoke that day. I am neither Wolfdane nor Jared, but both joined as one. It is through me that the tribes have come together. And through me, my people shall rule the North once more now. I want to know why you have come to me. Speak, Outlander. I was not aware that our peoples were at war. Perhaps the fact that savages have gathered at your doorstep prompted your visit. With respect, an interesting word for an Outlander to use. Is this the same respect shown to us when the Ten Towns stole our lands? Our peoples have known of each other for centuries, Outlander. When the Ten Towns decided to settle here, they knew full well what they were doing. You cannot claim ignorance in this affair, room for all. Your civilization has spread across Faerun like a plague of locusts. To the east, west, and south, the land reeks with the stench of your cities. Here in the north, the land remained pure until your people discovered the fish of the lakes. Now your pestilence strikes here as well. What near discovery will lead your people even further into our lands? What other treasures will you steal from us? No, there will be no room for my people here. You will press on, driving us further north, until the land ends and the cold kills us. We have no interest in treaties or in setting limits. Instead, we will take back what is rightfully ours. Only then will we be safe. So you say, Outlander, but you know nothing of what you speak. My people have already been driven far from their ancestral lands. One only needs to look at a map to see the truth of my words. Our tribes once roamed freely from the spine of the world in the south to the endless sea in the north. Now, we cannot travel south beyond Kelvin's Cairn without your leave. Fully half of our ancestral lands have denied us. Well said, Outlander. So, what common ground should we build this foundation upon? Would trade suffice? No. We are a simple people, with nothing that you would find of value. Cultural ties, perhaps? No. We are nomadic in nature, and cannot abide the confining cities in which you thrive. Spiritually? No. Even now, our most holy site, Jared Stone, is denied to us, sealed away beneath an outlander temple. We worship Tempas, not Tempus. Your people have even gone so far as to change his name and deny us even that small link. So you feel names and titles have no value, Outlander? To us, a name defines us as a people and carries with it honor and respect. Yet you would dare to make light of it, even when a god's name is concerned. You insult us. If I believed you to be a delegate of the Ten Towns that you claim to be, then we could come to terms. However, you are not what you seem, Outlander. Look at you. Our armor and blades the trappings of a diplomat? I think not. It is more likely that you are an assassin sent to slay me, just like the last delegate sent by the Ten Towns. You will find his head outside my tent. I questioned the assassin before he died, Outlander. The Council of the Ten Towns paid him, specifically the Lonelywood representative. Then you are a spy sent by the Ten Towns to learn of our strengths and weaknesses. In either case, I cannot let you leave this tent alive. Stay your hand, mighty Wolfdane. 
These strangers bear our people no malice. Upon my oath, I know this, for it was I who bade them to appear before this council. I see. Tell me, Yolder, why would you do such a thing? Their coming was foretold by a vision. I have been to the other side, great king. The spirits have shown me these heroes and other images that speak the will of Tempas. If Tempas has called these strangers to us, then surely we cannot dishonor ourselves by slaying them within the hallowed halls of Engoro. Very well. If it is the will of Tempas, then I will hear more of it. Tell me of your vision, Yolder. Why are these outlanders among our people? I... I do not know. The vision was unclear as to what purpose they must serve, but it must... Unclear? You dare to stand before me, speak the will of Tempas, and yet you are unclear as to what our Lord demands of us? How can you wear the mantle of a shaman if his voice does not ring true throughout your very being? I will hear nothing more from you, Yolder. You have failed your people and me. From this day forward, you shall be exiled to the burial isle. Contemplate your failure until you join with our ancestors. As for these outlanders, I will not contest even the flawed vision of a shaman. If it is the will of Tempas that they live, then so be it. Remove them from my sight. Of course. 